I'm thinking no one should buy guns from Walmart anymore. I think there's lots of other places that you can support at this point outside of Walmart. Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. Not unexpected, Walmart has made new policies going forward in regards to guns and ammo that will be sold in the store. Let's talk about it. So there's lots of articles out there right now on this Walmart story. I'm going to read one particular one. This is from Insider.com and the headline is, Walmart just made sweeping changes to gun-related policies. Read the CEO's full memo to employees explaining the moves. So we're just going to flip through this. I'm not actually going to read the whole thing. This is from the article itself and not the memo. Walmart on Tuesday asked shoppers to stop openly carrying guns into its stores and said it will end the sale of ammunition for handguns and assault-style weapons. Uh, the company made the changes in response to two deadly shootings that killed 24 people at its stores in El Paso, Texas, and South Haven, Mississippi. And this is a quote from them, We know these decisions will inconvenience some of our customers, and we hope they will understand. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan said in a memo sent to employees on Tuesday. So this is from his memo. We've been giving a lot of thought to our sale of firearms and ammunition. We've previously made decisions to stop selling handguns or military-style rifles. Um, the, this is a whole thing we can get into here and debate. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, such as the AR-15. To raise the age limit to purchase a firearm or ammunition to 21, to require a green light on a background check while federal law only requires the absence of a red light to videotape the point of sale of firearms and to only allow certain trained associates to sell firearms. So regardless of what the law is, they want to raise the age limit to 21. This is Walmart. And you know, unfortunately this has happened here in Florida. They've raised the age to 21 which is um, something that I feel is not only unconstitutional, but the audacity to say that someone that's 18 years old can die for their country, but they can't buy a firearm to defend themselves inside of their country is ridiculous. Walmart, Walmart is now signing on to that kind of uh, hypocrisy. Also, to require a green light on a background check while federal law only requires the absence of a red light? What does that mean? They basically want to make it more difficult. And then to go even further than that now, they want to videotape the point of sale. So I'm thinking no one should buy guns from Walmart anymore. I think there's lots of other places that you can support at this point outside of Walmart. I know um, lots of people within the gun community are going to be calling for like a boycott of Walmart, which I think I understand. I just think that you know, there's two things going side by side here. Obviously, Walmart's way off the track of who their customers are, but at the same time, the nature of who the, the typical, prototypical customer that exists for Walmart, these are people that actually need the, the prices that exist at Walmart when it comes to lots of different things, right? They don't just sell guns, they sell clothing, food, um, lots of different items that people rely on. So is it going to be easy to boycott them? Absolutely not. Me personally, I would rather not give any of my money to Walmart moving forward, but I just think it's um, it would be disingenuous to say that this is going to be something that's easy for most of the people out there in America to do. Today we're sharing the decisions we've made that go further. After selling through uh, our current inventory commitment, we will discontinue sales of short barreled rifle ammunition such as 223 caliber and the 556 caliber. So that's now short barrel rifle ammunition. Um, I'm not sure what they mean by that. Obviously I know what a short barrel rifle is. Short barrel rifles so far as I know, function with lots of different kinds of ammunition. I'm not sure what's going on here, why they're putting this in this category. And, you know, for you to have a short barrel rifle, you have to uh, go through uh, extra ATF paperwork, right? You have to pay a tax stamp, 200 bucks, 
go through extra background checks and all that kind of stuff in order to get a short barrel rifle. But now they're they're putting this moniker specifically on 223 and 556. I, I don't really know what's going on with that. Something internal for them, I guess. While commonly used in some hunting rifles can also be used in large capacity clips on military style weapons is what they're going on to say. So even though 223 and 556 are used for hunting, they admit that. They're saying it could be used in uh, large capacity clips. I'm not sure who wrote this. They're going to go on to say here that these are gun guys and they're, you know, they hunt and they have a history um, in, in the hunting community, etc., um, in the firearms community. I don't really believe that from how they worded this. We will sell through and discontinue handgun ammunition and we will discontinue handgun, handgun sales in Alaska, making our complete exit from handguns. So up till now, I guess they stopped already handguns in other places. Now they're going to stop it in Alaska. Um, Some place I think that people really need um, handguns. We, we need handguns throughout the entire country. But they were holding on to Alaska. Now they're letting go of Alaska. So we know these decisions will inconvenience some of our customers, and we hope they will understand. As a company, we experienced two horrific events in one week, and we will never be the same. Our remaining assortment will be even more focused on the needs of hunting and sports shooting enthusiasts. It will include long barrel deer rifles and shotguns, much of the ammunition they require, as well as hunting, sporting accessories, and apparel. We believe these actions will reduce our market share of ammunition from around 20% to a range of approx approximately 6 to 9%. We believe it will likely drift towards the lower end of that range over time given the combination of these changes. Um, as it relates to safety in our stores, there have been multiple incidents since El Paso where individuals attempting to make a statement and to test our response have entered our stores carrying weapons in a way that frightened and concerned our associates and customers. We have also had well-intentioned customers acting lawfully that have inadvertently caused a store to be evacuated and local law enforcement to be called to respond. These incidents are concerning and we would like to avoid them, so we are respectfully requesting that customers no longer openly carry firearms into our stores or SAM clubs in states where open carry is permitted unless they are authorized law enforcement officers. Yeah, there's been people trying to make statements and to create this kind of reaction. This is what a lot of these guys that have... Um, that have put out their manifestos. This is what they wanted, and Walmart's reacting to it. I don't think that um, I, I don't think Walmart just came to this decision. I think their their corporate culture has been moving in this direction for a long time, right? Walmart wants to be more and more accepted. The people that they built the business on the back of, the people who depend on them the most, as I said before, they've decided to sacrifice those people for this whole idea of the greater good and um, I, I think it's too bad that they're deciding to do that and they're going against the law there's states in this country that say that you can open carry you can walk into a Walmart open carry I'm not saying that I would open carry a rifle into a Walmart I know that that's one of the things that happened I don't agree with that at all but someone open carrying a pistol into a Walmart now Walmart saying they don't want that um, this is going to keep creeping into a lot of other things. They're deciding that it doesn't matter what the law is. We're going to say that this is what our law is within our stores. So, once again, coming back to it, yeah, you know, Walmart, it's a business. You know, they have the right from what we believe to do whatever it is that they want to do. And then on the flip side of that, we have the right to go, yeah. We don't like what you're trying to do to us, and we are going to treat you accordingly, maybe pull our business. So, I, you know, I think that um, it's a shame that they're going this direction, but we're going to see a lot more of this, and it really asks the question, like, you know, we're kind of getting backed into a corner here in the gun community. Who are we going to shop with going forward? Who's going to be left that we're going to shop with? Obviously, I would say support your local gun stores. 
buy things online, support the companies out there that believe in the Second Amendment, but you're not going to eat bullets, right? You're not going to be able to eat that. You're not going to be able to feed your children and clothe them with that. So as more and more companies move away from uh, believing in the Constitution, what do we do? How do we, you know, how do we uh, push back against that? How do we take the reins? Do we, how do we know what stores, what companies that we can shop with and we believe in? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be really tough to figure that one out. For sure, for sure, I've stopped a long time ago buying any kind of firearms related things from Walmart. I think there's lots of companies out there that we could go to, both online, local, etc. Right? We've done that. But now we're talking about a company that spans so many things. People buy electronics there, they buy clothing there, they buy food there, um, they get their cars uh, repaired or fixed or you know, do things like change batteries and things like that there. So how far does this go? They're talking about the, the Sam's Clubs as well. So how far does it go? How much, um, you know, how much can we really turn away from Walmart and not be punishing ourselves because what because what other alternatives do we have we don't really have that many in my opinion and um, I think this is indicative of where most businesses are going Walmart for a long time has wanted to make peace with the rest of the world and they've decided to do that at the cost of the core customer that's always supported Walmart so they're going to be putting up new signage throughout the stores to talk about this. As an additional step, they're saying they commit to working alongside other retailers to make the overall industry safer, including sharing our best practices. For example, we're exploring ways to share our technical specifications and compliance controls for our proprietary firearms uh, sales uh, technology platform. The, here's the, here's uh, something I think that's also important here. Finally, we encourage our nation's leaders to move forward and strengthen background checks and to remove weapons from those who have been determined to pose an imminent danger. We do not sell military-style rifles, and we believe the reauthorization of the assault weapons ban should be debated to determine its effectiveness. They're, they're making a policy stand here. You know, they, they want stronger background checks. We already have background checks. It's already done by the government. I don't know how much stronger they want it to be, but they obviously want it to be stronger. They're saying that uh, to remove weapons from those who have been determined to pose an imminent danger, red flag laws, so they're supporting that. And they uh, are supporting the reauthorization of the assault weapons ban. So these guys are going far, man. They're, they're you know... This is a completely different Walmart that we're talking about. I'm sending letters to the White House and to congressional leadership that call for action on these common sense measures. As we've seen before, these horrific events occur and then the spotlight fades. We should not allow this to happen. Congress and the administration should act. Um, and then to close out here, they go on to say we have a long heritage as a company of serving responsible hunters and sportsmen and women and we're going to continue doing so. Our founder Sam Walton was an avid outdoorsman and we're headquartered in a state known for its duck hunting and deer hunting. My family raised bird dogs when I was growing up in Jonesboro, Arkansas and I'm a gun owner myself. We understand that heritage, our deeply rooted place in America and our influence as the world's largest retailer. And we understand the responsibility that comes with it. We want what's best for our customers, our associates, and our communities. In a complex situation lacking a simple solution, we're trying to take constructive steps to reduce the risk that events like these will happen again. So, you know, to me, Walmart is sounding a lot like the left here when it comes to this. And I think it's pretty clear, you know, the customers that they're trying to hold on to and the customers that they're trying to appease versus the customers who believe in the Constitution, they believe in the Second Amendment, they believe what I believe, what I, I think you guys believe, that you don't have anything that you can't defend. Ultimately, that's what this is about. People that decide to do bad, evil, destructive things, for whatever reason they come to that conclusion, those broken people, we're always going to have them. 
we'll never be able to get rid of these people. There's not a law, there's not things that we can actually do other than in the moment when those people decide to take out their wrath on other human beings, someone has to be there to defend against those people. That's what we believe, that's what we're fighting for. We're obviously not happy about any of these things that happen, and they could potentially happen to us and have happened to lots of people that believe in the Second Amendment, to lots of people that believe in the Constitution. We understand that. But we also understand the principle that if you cannot defend something, you do not have it. We also understand the principle of uh, Sivas Passum Parabellum. If you seek peace, prepare for war. This is how we live our life. We believe in that. But maybe we are becoming a minority. Maybe when Walmart and all these other companies that can look at a lot of data, when they look at this stuff, they say, you know what? This is where most of the people are. Most of the people are sheep. They believe these things, if we say these things, if we do these things, if we act like this, this will, this will appease most of the people and we'll be in their good graces. Because the people that we built our company on the back of, those people, we're not worried about them anymore. No matter what, they're going to have to come into our stores and shop there. They just won't be able to get these things from our stores anymore. And let's still look at the fact of what they're leaving behind are still destructive things. So it's just a matter of time before they decide, yeah, we're not going to carry shotguns. We're not going to carry these rifles. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. You know, why do you have to hunt when you can get uh, Incredi meat or the Unbeliever Burger or whatever it is exists out there? I don't think there's any end to this. I think Walmart is going to keep spiraling down here. And I think ultimately, if you are in the group of people that used to believe that Walmart was on your side, you're going to have to make tough decisions. Like I said before, though, where do we go to? Who do we shop with? Who's on our side? It's getting more and more difficult because that box is getting smaller and smaller. It's unfortunate news. It's sad news to see that a company like Walmart that, as I've said many times in this video, has risen on the backs of people like me and you turn to this, but I think we're going to see lots more companies doing this, unfortunately. We're going to see lots of politicians out there doing this. I think this news is a terrible signal of what's coming in America. It's unfortunate, it's sad that we're going down this path, that we've decided in order to make ourselves feel safer, we're going to give up our ability to protect ourselves. We're going to declaw and defang ourselves and be at the mercy of people out there, that we're going to turn more and more places into safe zones, even though everything has shown us that it doesn't work. It's unfortunate and it's sad. But I would say, don't give up the faith. Keep fighting, keep pushing back, keep reaching out to the politicians that represent you. Keep supporting organizations that fight for the Second Amendment, like GOA. You'll find a link here in, in the description of this video. Don't give up faith. I know this sounds like, it's, re it's, it's terrible, it is a terrible thing. It sounds terrible, it is terrible. But there's something that we know that is a truth that will always be the truth. In the end, we must be able to defend what we have. Freedom, peace, happiness, our families, the people that we love. Only being able to defend them will keep them in this world. All right, that's it. Like I said, this is, uh, this is bad news. Lots more bad news, I fear, coming down the pike, but Keep up the faith. Keep fighting. Um, not one inch. That's what I believe. I'm Hank Strange.